Hello and welcome to the third in this series of these glucocontro.online masterclasses. I'm, all glad, I'm glad you can all make it today. In this masterclass, we will be covering the reports functionality within Glucocontro. We know your time is valuable, therefore we will ensure we stay on track and finish by one o'clock with 20 minutes to cover the content, leaving five to 10 minutes at the end for any questions. As I mentioned, we are recording this webinar and we'll post it on our website giving you the chance to revisit any parts of it afterwards. As we go through the presentation, if you have any questions, then please type them in the Q&A section and we will cover them all at the end of the session. So let's get started. On the webinar today is myself, Neeraj Kibay, and I will be taking you through the presentation. And then there are also my colleagues, Matt and Richard, who will cover off questions at the end. The three learning objectives for the webinar are, Firstly, to show you what reports are available with the click of a button within Glucocontro. Secondly, to overview what information is contained within each of the reports, so you can see which ones work best for you. And lastly, to give you some examples to show you how these reports can help you on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's go through the different available reports. There are currently five output reports available within Glucocontro. The first is the standard dashboard report. The next is the blood sugar report. The third is the blood sugar diary. Glucocontro also allows you to view data as an ambulatory glucose profile or AGP, which is the fourth report, with finally the fifth report being a raw data output. As everyone likes to view and interpret data in different ways, having different report formats allows you to pick the format to meet you and your colleagues' needs. So where can you find these reports in Glucocontro? When you're in a patient profile, you will see Generate Report in the banner on the right-hand side. Clicking this will then drop down the option to select your desired report. It's that easy. To show you how this works, we've recorded a video so you can see it firsthand. So firstly, you would select your patient to bring up their profile. The report outputs are based on the filters and timeline selected at the top of the page. Therefore, if we wanted the report to cover the data, for example, for the last 30 days, we would select this time period. The Generate Report button is located in the top right of the banner and clicking it brings down the drop down menu of the five different reports, which I briefly touched on earlier in the presentation. For this example, let's select the first report. It automatically opens the output mode, allowing you to either print it or create a PDF document. To print, select your printer and ensure it is set to color printing as the color range indicators are a major feature across the contour portfolio that can help with the interpretation of data, allowing you to engage with your patients. You would then click print. If you want a digital version, then select save as a PDF from the destination dropdown box, followed by clicking save. You would then select a suitable location and a file name, and then click the save button in the bottom right of the pop-up window. For both saving as a PDF or printing, when this is complete, it will take you back to the report page. You just need to click the close report in the top right of the screen, and this will return you to the patient profile. It's that simple. So now you can quickly and simply create a report. Let's go into a bit more detail about what each report has to offer. The standard dashboard report has a number of sections to it. The first part at the top is color coded based on key performance indicators. These KPIs cover the glucose management indicator, which is an estimated HbA1c, along with showing the number of very low and high readings they have had, a pre and post meal average, standard deviation, and a coefficient of variation or CV which highlights how spread the readings have been. Below this is a timeline graph showing all the readings 
color coded to their reference ranges running from left to right. It is quick and simple to see any trends, patterns, or readings for discussion. After this timeline graph, there is a bar chart showing the percentage of readings below, in, and above their reference ranges, along with a table showing it broken down based on the fasting and pre and post mealtime flags. The last part of this report shows the readings plotted out for each day by the time they were recorded. The most recent day is shown first and the previous day is below this. Each reading shows the exact value and the meal marker if it had been flagged. This is a good table style view to see when in the day readings have been done and then it allows you to easily look down and see how things may vary by day and time. And with the colour coding, you are quickly able to see any readings of concern or ones for future discussion. The blood sugar report acts as a good summary report. This is based on the readings from the last 90 days and therefore will always be the same, irrespective of if you have selected a shorter or longer time period in the patient profile view. The top part of the report shows the last 90 days results broken down into 30 day groups, with the most recent being on the left hand side of the three bar charts. As you can see, it shows the percentage of readings in the reference range, along with the same for below in red and above in amber. By looking at all three bars, you can quickly see whether the percentage of readings in range has been stable increasing or decreasing over the last 90 days. The chart to the right of this plots the readings for the last 30 days by time of day they were done. It does group them into six hour bands and the line shows the average. In this case, the line is green as it falls within the reference range defined for this patient. If the average was above the reference range, it would be amber and red if below just like the individual readings. The second half of the report focuses on just the last 30 days and the two graphs plot the readings across the 24 hours of the day for both before and after meal readings. At the bottom of the page is a space to write any topics for discussion and therefore if printed out is a great place to capture key observations or agreed actions for your patients to take away with them. The blood sugar diary report has been a very popular report due to the layout being very similar to a record diary. Without even looking in finer detail, it is simple to see with the color coded values where the low, high and in range readings fall, the frequency of testing and when in the day they are performed. In the upper part of the report are the same key performance indicators as the blood glucose dashboard report and the day view with all the data points plotted by time in the day. The main part of this report is the diary layout with the days of the week running down the right hand side. In this example, you can see the readings with their meal markers positioned on the timeline for where in the day they were performed. If they have been using the Contour Diabetes app and recorded either of their food, medications or activity, this will also show up on the report, allowing for a more complete picture. In the right hand side, the columns, for e the columns for each day, it shows their average blood glucose reading for that day, allowing you to see how this varied from one day to the next. The AGP or Ambulatory Glucose Profile Report is a report format that has been created by the International Diabetes Centre and Essentia is licensed to use. This is a report format that is becoming ever more popular. It looks to use a standardized report across different pro platforms to make it easier for HCPs to interpret data. The great news for yourself is that the contour color range indicators are fully aligned to the same color format used by these reports, that being green for within range, red for below and amber for above. On their website, they have a guide that explains the different parts of the report and what to look for. 
In the chat, we will put the link to this page so you can view it in more detail afterwards. The fifth report available is the patient's blood glucose data. This is an Excel-friendly formatted raw data file, which gives flexibility to work with the data in a number of ways. Contained in the data, it shows the date and time for the reading, the actual reading value, the insulin and carbs, if these have been entered via the Contour Diabetes app, and the meal markers, if flagged. So now that you've seen what reports are available, what information they contain, and how to create the reports in either a PDF digital version or being able to print a hard copy, let's look at some example case studies of how you could use them on a day-to-day -day basis. In this first example, let's think about a patient called Brian. So Brian monitors his blood glucose levels to the agreed schedule. However, he's not too much into technology and brings his logbook with him. Although he captures nearly all his readings, they are hard to read and see any particular trend or pattern in his diary, and therefore can be time consuming trying to understand his current situation. Therefore, in the consultation, after you have downloaded Brian's readings from his meter to Glucocontro, you click the Generate Report button, select your report of choice, and print it out. By printing the report, it enables you to discuss Brian's readings with him and have him take it away to reflect on. The color coding of the report helps support your discussion with Brian, with the green highlighting to him where he was in range, red for below, and amber for above is individual reference ranges. Along with the colors, the graphical representation of the data can support interaction and therefore look to get engagement around any changes or agreed goals you would like to talk through. By printing it out, you have the option to add comments or highlight areas on the charts. This could help reinforce positive achievements or under the topic for discussion section of this report, capture the key items discussed and agreed to help Brian remember afterwards. You can then use the printout to summarize the key points. And maybe in future, if Brian becomes more engaged with technology, then he could pair his phone to his meter and connect to the free Contour Diabetes app. In this second example case study, Anne was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes five years ago and has been monitoring her blood glucose for the past 12 months at the frequency you have both agreed. Her HbA1c remains above where you would like it to be. She is on multiple medications and you're considering starting her on insulin but would like to get input from your colleagues. As we showed before, you can create a PDF of any of the reports by selecting the PDF option from the drop-down printer box after generating the report. This could be saved to a shared file location or sent to your colleagues by email. Please always remember to follow your local IT procedures for communicating sensitive patient information. It is also simple to attach the file to their patient record in most clinical IT systems like EMIS or System 1. If you are going to be looking for input from your colleagues on a regular basis, then think about inviting them to join Glucocontro and your clinic something that we have covered in our previous two masterclasses so that they can have instant access, making it easier for them and yourself. Now let's summarize what we have covered based on the learning objectives at the start. We covered the five different reports that can quickly be created from the generate report button in the top banner of Glucocontro and how you can select to print or save as a PDF from the pop-up box that appears. We then went through each of the reports and what information was contained in each. For the ambulatory glucose profile report, with this being a standardized report used by many platforms, in the chat are the links I showed to their website, which include a nice document on how to understand the data. And finally, we went through a couple of example case studies to demonstrate how you could use the printout or a digital PDF report 
with both your patients or your colleagues to help support effective consultations. Now let me pass over to Matt and Richard to see if we have any questions. If you want to ask anything, then please type it in the Q&A box. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nidge, uh, for running through that and uh, covering off the reports part within Gluco Control. Uh, we try to obviously make these uh, webinars very short and, and quick um, and don't want to overload people and try and just keep it as simple. And we've had very positive feedback about the reports and the different varieties to meet different people's needs. So wanted to uh, just run a, a webinar to make people aware of them and uh, cover off if there's any questions. I see there are a, a number of uh, things within the uh, questions and answers. Uh, so I'll just go through the list and we'll just hand, handle them between myself and Matt. So uh, do you want me to take the first one, Matt? So the question is, uh, do the patients have to do anything in order for us to be able to view the reports? Um, no, there's nothing you require from the patient. They don't have to click on anything or, or do anything. If they are uh, a user of the Control Diabetes app or Gluco Control, uh, then they will have given you permission to view their results. If they're like Brian, the first case study where they have bring their meter in and you quickly download them um, via the cable or Bluetooth, then you, you have access to them. So you can just click on the generate report button. There's nothing you can do. It literally is as simple as just clicking the button in the generate report and then selecting the, the report that you would, would like. Hope that that covers off that uh, one. Uh, second one down, Matt, maybe you want to take this. Uh, uh, can I export these reports into a patient's notes within our clinical system like uh, EMIS? Yeah, the answer is yes, you can. Um, so to do that, you would have to, first of all, open an individual patient's profile within Gluco Control Online. Then in the top right corner, there's a button called Generate Report. When you click that, all of the report options that are available will show. So select the report that you're after. Um, as Nid showed during the presentation, the default option is uh, to print that report. So you would have to change the destination setting from your printer to save as PDF. You would then save that PDF on your computer in a desired location. And from then you can import it into your clinical system, such as EMIS or System 1. Uh, like most things these days, if you go onto YouTube, there are videos that show you how to import PDFs into patient notes. And I'm sure that NHS Trust or ICB IT departments would also be able to advise on that if you weren't sure. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Matt. The third one I've uh, I'll take I've just because I'm gonna, I can show my screen as well with this. Uh, can I change the target ranges with the Gluco control? So I'll just share my screen. Uh, Matt, because you're you're speaking, can you uh, just confirm that you can see um, the Gluco control screen for me, please? Yeah, I've got that. Yep. Brilliant. Thanks very much. So um, as uh, Niraj Nid showed within the presentation, if you uh, find your patient, in this case, I'll use the, the, the this uh, made up one, Peter Common. Uh, if you wanted to change the uh, reference ranges for him, uh, next uh, to his name over here on the top left is the little three green buttons. If you click on those, you get uh, three options. If you click edit patient profile, you then have the option to uh, edit their personal details, health uh, information. But you obviously have that uh, range there that says glucose ranges. You have the three different ranges for pre-meal, post-meal and any critical uh, ranges that they are. These are set to the default. But to be able to change them is extremely simple. Either you can just alter the value in the bottom or you just grab and pull up and down the values to whatever you would like to uh, set them at for that patient. So they're all personal to uh, each patient. And then you just click submit. The range, as you see now, has jumped uh, up before. Obviously, the top limit was 10. Now it's obviously moved up to uh, the new value that I put on there. So it adjusts them straight away and then how you can uh, personalize them to each patient from there. Before I just take the fourth question, whilst I've got open, uh, I did obviously put in the chat the web link to the ambulatory glucose profile. I say, because it is, is 
we license it from this um, uh, International Diabetes Centre. They've got a very good resource on their website which goes through the report, what each section means, how to interpret and how to get the most out of it. So I just wanted to uh, uh, say that and I say the, the link is in the chat. The fourth one after that, I'll pass over to you, Matt, is uh, if I have a patient who is not using the Contour app, is it still possible to get the reports? Yes, um, so Gluco Contour Online can be used by patients using any meter from the Contour portfolio, regardless of whether or not that meter is a smart meter that has Bluetooth or whether it doesn't. Um, and again, even if a patient is using a connected meter such as Contour Plus Blue, but doesn't want to use a Contour Diabetes app, you can still connect their meter to your computer via USB cable. Um, and from there, you can import their blood glucose readings into that patient's profile. Um, if a patient wanted to, they could also do this from home by connecting their meter to their home computer via a cable and home uploading their data where you as a healthcare professional would then have visibility of the new data every time the patient re-uploaded it from home. So to summarize, yes, you can use it um, for all patients using any console meter, regardless of whether or not the patient uses the app or not. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Matt. I hope that answers the person's uh, uh, question. I don't think we've got any more. I'll just give it a few seconds. And whilst we just see if there are any further questions, just make people aware that the next webinar is taking place in five weeks' time on Thursday, the 2nd of November. We'll look to cover the uh, notes and messaging uh, element functionality around Gluco Control that allows you to quickly, simply uh, message and uh, discuss things with both patients and colleagues within the visits part of the um, uh, functionality say, of Gluco Control. So we look forward to obviously welcoming you on that and as I say, try to keep it like short and sweet, uh, nice and simple for people. Okay, I don't think there are any further questions. So I see we're just over five minutes short of time. I'm sure people will not complain about uh, finishing a little early, give you five minutes back for your, for your lunch. Again, as uh, Niraj said, thank you very much for attending. Do appreciate you are very busy and spending the time uh, to uh, attend this uh, webinar. If you have any questions or queries afterwards, please reach out to us. We're more than willing to help in any way. Thank you very much, everybody. And hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.